okay good evening of today's class we are going to start the lecture 2 we will be covering the basic concept of stress and strain so basically today we will try to explain more details in more details about the stress and categories and some calculations in terms of stress calculations okay so this is a little bit review from the last class we already discussed this one this is a normal force so what is the another name of this normal force axial force very axial good force. so we call axial force also so normal force actually the name is coming from the normal directions so we know if something is uh, perpendicular we call it the normal right with respect to this cross-sectional area this force is acting perpendicularly okay so if i name this plane suppose this is a and b suppose this plane is a b and this plane is b c so can you tell me for which plane this this force would be the shear force for bc, for BC plane b for force will be shear force very good for plane b c the same force would be the shear force. Shear, shear force do you understand the difference Yes, please, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So for this AB, if you consider this is AB one, right? For this AB plane, it might be the axial. Okay. So since this force is pulling, right? This force is pulling this member. So the member will feel tension. So, okay. And these forces is pushing right it is compressing it compressing the member so it would be compression so important things to note here usually this is symmetrical so the force that acts perpendicular to a certain surface and passes through so passes through the symmetrical axis of the body so it is not necessarily that always it will go through the symmetric axis sometimes you will find it may not be in symmetric but which one or which cases we are calling the symmetric suppose if you have this uh, this is a member suppose you apply load here right so suppose if you apply p amount of load okay and you consider the cross-section area of this is a right cross-sectional area is a suppose so what would be the stress the stress should be p by a right it's just supposed to be p by a okay so now question is that if you take a section in different locations suppose you take a section here one section another section and another section is here section one two and three right so if you find this all the sections is giving you the same amount of sigma that time you will call it symmetric the stress is symmetrical stress you understand now yes. which conditions do you need to maintain to get all the sigma same can anybody guess to get sigma always same on these three sections what are the condition you need to maintain cross-sectional area must be same a must be same so how can you confirm that the pressure is same or the force is same if it is passing through the centroid if it is passing through the centroid so that means what the resultant force does not deviate the resultant force is passing through the cg because you know you might have several forces you might have several loading if you're having multiple loadings you might have chances that your resultant force is moving other way so that time you will not get the p same in the all the sections but if the resultant forces of all these is passing through the centroid if it is passing through the centroid that time you can see that all the forces are same all the sections will give you the same forces so this is the condition of force and to understand the condition of a this is very easy if you find all the sections are same so a is same is there any confusion now okay let me give you another examples 
what happens if you have this kind of suppose you have this kind of section right and you have a load here so have a look if you take a section here if you take a section here and if you take a section here these three things are not same so based on the area and based on the thickness of this plate it might change if i say the thickness of this plate is uniform okay you don't have to worry that time you just consider the okay so that time you just need to consider the width and you find the calculation of the area and then you get it perfectly so if the area is higher that time stress would be less if area is less stress would be higher because same load is passing through the body or centroid okay now there is another challenge what happened what happen if i give you a hole here right you see the stress diagram may not be same anymore because the this stress yes, here will come like this you understand so i will look if you take a section here you are not having the same like this right these three number sections are not, yes, are not equal Are you getting the concept? Yes, sir. So now it is might be clear for you what is symmetrical stress or symmetrical stress. Okay. Usually for the normal stress, we find the symmetrical stress if the cross-sectional area does not change. So type of force and stress. Uh, here we can see uh, it's, it's, if we continue, we know this sigma equals to P over A that's it simple one so if you are having the pulling force you'll have the tension if you're having the pushing force or compression you'll have the compression so if you take a small segment or cross section anywhere you get the same anywhere you take the section you get the same sigma when a cross section ever is normally stress if you look into that when a cross sectional area bar is subject to axial force through the centroid it is only subject to the normal stress okay so i already discussed some of it right if it is passing through the centroid the stress is assumed to be averaged over the area so if you are having uh, like more forces and a resultant forces is passing through the centroid so that time you are getting this one so instead of this one also you can consider the normal stress this is another kind of normal stress but there are several kinds of forces okay so that's why maybe multiple forces acting if the resultant force do you know what is resultant force suppose if it is fx suppose this is fx and this is fy right if you do the summation based on the magnitude based on the magnitude of fy and fx you will get another resultant force with respect to the x-axis okay so you'll get the directions and the magnitude so this is we call the resultant force so if this resultant force is passing through the centroid so that time you are getting the average stress throughout the sections similar okay now there are some uh, very simple examples so here you can just try on it a galvanized pipe has a constant diameter of 40 mm so what is the diameter of it 40 mm and thickness of 10 mm thickness of 10 mm can you see this yes, sir. thickness is 10 yeah. mm so thickness is 10 mm that means what rest of the 20 mm is empty this is 10 mm this is 10 mm 20 right so this is another 20 is totally empty okay so subject to a compression force of 60 kilonewton so it is having some compression force can you see okay determine the normal stress in the pipe so what is the formula of calculating the stress normal stress sigma equals to p by a or f by a both are okay force over area that is that is more specific force over area so you already know the force if it is 60 kilonewton what would be this one 
What is 60? What is to make it equilibrium? Right? Okay. So now you know the P. P is how much? 60 kilonewton. And what is A? You just need to find out the area of this solid area. So once you get the solid area, you can get the uh, answer of this stress. So I have a look. Here we can see. If you take the summation of P, needless clue to do this. You don't have to do this. You can easily get it, right? What would be this P? This P would be 60. Okay. So this sign negative is showing that, okay, this is compression. So area you can calculate. So 40 minus 20, right? So you need to reduce this hollow part. Diameter of this hollow part is 20, right? So you need to consider the total cylinder or total circle then you need to reduce this hollow part so this is the way so this is usually consider capital r and this is we consider smaller then you can find out the area which is this one so once you get the area everything is easy keep in mind uh, stress unit is force over area so force was in kilonewton and area is in millimeter square